The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verana Media Network. Welcome to this week's edition of Gen XYZ. Now, Sri Lanka was quite fortunate given its spectacular security forces and health service to survive and prosper under the COVID-19 pandemic. But a form of virus it has had a tough time dealing with is drugs. Intoxication has become commonplace in the country with the government making it a forefront within their agenda to stop and protect its people. The individuals most affected by the drug issue in the country and in the world as well is the youth. It is understanding this fact where we decided to build a discussion on how drugs and other substances prompting addiction affect the human brain, mostly the younger minds. In this discussion, let's take a cross-section as to what the key issues are and how as an individual within our homes, you could also contribute in removing this threat of drugs from the country. As most issues that we have encountered within this show, we see that drugs, and even in the case of drugs, it is awareness that is most important. With those thoughts in mind, let's go right in to the discussion. Welcome to the discussion portion of Gen XYZ. So, as we have said before, we are going to go deeper into this topic of drugs and uh, how it has uh, influenced the youth, how addiction has influenced the youth. And I have brought together two individuals to give us just that, people who have first-hand experience uh, with uh, dealing with these kind of individuals, the youth that we really need to bring together and, you know, save or rather from this sort of menacing situation. Uh, so, Doctor, uh, I'm joined by Dr. Nisha Fernando, who works at Mitru PSO, one of the government organizations working in the front lines of uh, this specific commitment, and uh, Dr. Lasith Obdarachi, who, is, uh, who works at the base hospital in Maravilla. Uh, he's a consultant psychiatrist there. Uh, doctors, thank you very much for joining us. Our viewers will very much be pleased to hear the exact you know, kind of details that we have been having you know, to give out to them during this uh, uh, period of time, I must say, because we have taken the case against drugs very seriously within this country, and that is a very good thing. Uh, Dr. Neja, I want to start with you. Uh, before we get into the details of this program and everything, Doctor, can you tell us uh, on a daily basis what are the kind of cases that you meet, what is the kind of work you do, uh, maybe even a brief introduction to Mitru PSO because you know some people might know it because it's a leading organization, others would like an introduction as well. Doctor, how do you approach this topic? Yes, Mitru PSO started from uh, Ministry of Health, Health yeah. and uh, Family Health Bureau mainly, uh, started for victims of uh, gender-based violence. Uh, we receive victims of gender-based violence and uh, they are coming with uh, affected Variety mindset and they are, we are listening to them and uh, doing counselling, empowerment. Uh, um, sometimes they come with the husband, sometimes not. But uh, we try to get the husband and talk to him also. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, there we uh, find sometimes uh, their husbands are uh, alcohol addicted, uh, heroin addicted, uh, cannabis addicted, mm. and uh, like that we have to attend to whole family, uh, even the kids, young boys, young girls, kids we are attending. All right. Uh, I think that's a good introduction as to how uh, Mitru PSO functions, you know, yes. the kind of people that they cater to. Exactly, I believe, the kind of population that we are dealing with because the youth is uh, generally closely related to this, uh, the family portion of all of this. I think we also discussed the family is the unit that we need to protect mm -hmm. in uh, everything. Uh, if I go Actually, to... not only yeah. that, we have to, uh, sometimes we have to refer them to the child rights protection officer, right. uh, the other officers like uh, DS office and legal. Uh, Aid Commission and uh, other uh, units of the hospital mm -hmm. uh, uh, service we are giving. Yeah. Uh, I, I, that is, uh, I think, a very important point, Doctor, because I wanted to, uh, moving ahead with the discussion, wanted to really take up these uh, institutions, the authorities that are mm -hmm. in charge, and we will really get into that also. Dr. Lasith, if I uh, could come to you. Uh, before everything, Doctor, could you give us a brief uh, approach, you know, how you have uh, now the topic of discussion we really wanted to take on, you know, this menacing uh, issue of drugs within the country. 
how have you really understood it what is the work that you do on a daily basis yeah. where do you you know if we start our uh, pro program with you know really focusing on a problem where do you say okay this is where we need to start how would you approach it doctor first of all thank you daninda for having us here so actually i'm working as acting consultant psychiatrist at the marvel base hospital so today actually psychiatric services in sri lanka is quite well distributed so for example maravela base hospitals like maravela now have consultant psychiatrists working so now when i work they are alcohol and drug abuse is one of the two most common presentations of new patients to my clinic so the magnitude magnitude of the problem is seen by us with our first hand experience with the patients so unfortunately what i find is that the awareness of the community regarding drug and alcohol as a what we call a mental disorder or kind of a psychiatric problem is very less so when we when we have somebody having these issues most of the time how we attribute and how we see that problem is a kind of a that's his personality or that's his bad nature or something like that so as psychiatrists we see a little bit deeper than that so substance abuse when especially when they are addicted to the substance it's actually a psychiatric illness mm -hmm. in the classification of psychiatric illness illnesses there are a whole segment of psychiatric disorders which are substance related so why we call it a illness is that there are very clear changes in the brain which we see in the patients who are addicted to the substances so why they can't get over their problem is mainly because their brain has changed it is ill it is sick so how much you are determined to stop will not work because they need support so that is a very important message where people should understand actually people who are addicted to the substances don't realize that they they when they want to quit they just try to do it by themselves when they fail they kind of say okay i can't do it it's my problem so they don't understand there are doctors who are there to help mm -hmm. uh so having talked about the substance uh, and the causes yes yeah so i would like to tell a little bit more about the problems with teenagers okay. the adults mm -hmm. so if you take teenagers and adults their uh, addiction is actually a little bit different the main reason being teenagers have a brain which is developing whereas the adults have a developed or mature brain so the effect of substance in a developing brain is much more than in an adult with a mature brain for example adolescence is the time where we learn things and what we call the brain has what we call plasticity mm. that means the neurons are ready to make new synapses and change when the substances are introduced in that period to the brain the substance use the changes are hardwired hardwired into that brain and it is very difficult to reverse it in the adulthood for example in the american studies they have found 90% of tobacco users in america who are dependent on tobacco started their substance use as teenagers so the start, start is there when it started there it's very difficult to change so that's why i think it's very important today we are mainly discussing about adolescents and teenagers and their substance use all right i think uh, a very good context that you laid down doctor towards the initial part of the program doctor nish i want to come to you uh, now uh, you gave us introduction as to you know the daily struggles the daily problems that mitropias gets to uh, talk about you know the the kind of things that they have uh, doctor i want to take your take now doctor 
uh, Lasith gave us a you know, direction as to uh, how this has been identified. Doctor, how do you identify uh, the problems that you face uh, on a daily basis? You know, where have you sourced this? You know, is it, uh, do you think there are groups of people that are, you know, supporting this movement, you know, and uh, having drugs being uh, sort of made addicted to the youth and that to continue, that sort of cycle to continue? How do you see this yes, problem? I find that, uh, as I said, uh, I am receiving this uh, gender-based violence victims. Yes. That means uh, most, mostly mother, mother of the family. So when there's domestic violence at home, kids are uh, affected well affected and uh, they try to feel inferior they try to feel uh, like um, they don't they uh, introverted personality personality problems are there so the, they are prone to get uh, get rid of that uh, environment problem they try to uh, make some other reason they, they think that it's a big thing but it's a myth that, uh, that like that and uh, for curiosity also they go sometimes with the uh, friends uh, like the, there are a lot of myths you know, so the, like that they go but uh, finally they realize what happens and when uh, when they realize the sure. it's uh, gone lot of gone so uh, a lot of mothers come to my, my center mm -hmm. with uh, young kids they were doing their studies very well, mm -hmm. but uh, after addicting to cannabis, uh, getting addicted to, to heroin and uh, those uh, substances, they are now they are not doing well, and now they are sleeping all the time and not studying well. But then uh, conflicts uh, occurs in the Stop family. within the family. Yeah, so mother uh, parents try to control it, then it gets worse. Uh, not doing that, if they can come to the hospital and uh, attend to uh, the clinic, that will be much better for the kids and the whole family. All right. I think that is uh, important. Both the both doctors mentioned uh, the solution, the treatment is available, but then bringing that patient that to the hospital <laughs> is the struggle that uh, many people are facing. I think that's a very good place to take a short break. Um, you're with Gen XYZ, stay with us. We will go deeper into this topic and really analyze uh, where we can find a solution to all of this and you know really treat this problem within society. Stay with us, this is Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XY. So we are in discussion with uh, two very important individuals uh, pertaining to how we can address the drug issue within this country. Uh, Dr. Lasit, I would like to move back to you um, and uh, let's proceed from this point. Now, we really established uh, some of the initial issues that you all had witnessed. You know, first getting people to come to the hospital, well, it's an entire struggle in itself. There are issues within the unit of a family and then uh, moving on to how this has progressed within society and you know, it has become sort of like a trend uh, sort of thing in certain parts and you know, everywhere we can't have this awareness going in. So awareness was some other point that doctor you mentioned. Uh, from the experiences that you have had, doctor, from whatever you can tell us today, uh, what are the you know things that you have witnessed as uh, signs that have increased or characteristics within society uh, of drugs that have been introduced? Mm -hmm. uh, what is there in society? What is the picture that is currently uh, present within the Sri Lankan society? If I can then move on to what are the characteristics you have seen within addicts amongst addicts mm -hmm. itself, mm -hmm. because the point I want to go with the program is uh, how can we solve this, you know, the solution aspect of yeah. everything. Uh, to move on to that, Doctor, I want to get your take on uh, this first. Uh, how would you approach that uh, specific aspect? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. So, when we kind of uh, look at the patients we get, the main kind of drugs abused in Sri Lanka at present, I would say, are uh, alcohol, cannabis, Nicotine, that means smoking cigarettes, and heroin. So, m majority of the patients we see are having those substance use, and most of the time it's a combination of few drugs. 
So when it comes to teenagers, adolescents, so they usually start their drug abuse by taking mainly smoking cigarettes and uh, as well as cannabis. So those are the kind of starter substances which are introduced to the teenagers. So this introduction happens in very subtle ways. So the dealers who wants to sell these products know, sorry, know how to do it and how to catch the young Because school going children during the young ages during the young ages so the youngsters who get caught in to these people have as you said some common characteristics so one thing is they come in not everybody i am saying majority they come in disrupted families so there are problems in the family and most of them see their parents or adults using the substances and they have this attitude or this picture that using a substance is actually a mark of manhood mm -hmm. to be a man you have to take substances so and another feature of them is actually in even in studies they have found out people who use substances their IQ level tends to be lower than the no not that everybody who's mm -hmm. <laughs> taking substances are having low, low IQ or intelligence yeah. but I mean on average they tend to be in the lower side and also they have this emotional problems anxieties depression kind of emotional turmoil is there and personality wise people who have delinquent behaviors in the childhood we call them conduct problems that means a uh, bit aggressive involved in fights with others and all those impulsive personalities that's also a kind of common trait which we find in these people so there are common traits but it never kind of encompasses the everybody so there may be someone who's coming in a very good family with very protective parents still taking substance the so it actually happens most of the time due to the peer pressure children always try to get themselves involved with the peers and if the, there's a peer pressure okay why not take these drugs we all take it so some children just can't say no they, they don't know how to say no right mm -hmm. so they take it and once once you once you take it as i explained earlier the brain itself take care of the, the rest best all right uh, doctor yeah. if i yeah. come back to you if you could uh, add on to what the doctor mentioned and if you could also address you know uh, i think doctor gave us a good characterization of what's available in uh, society as well um, how do you approach uh, that entire aspect you know if we do see these sort of individuals what are your approaches to them you know how do you firstly start supporting this entire cycle you know how do you think uh, people fall into this cycle of you know them eventually becoming addicted to these drugs or even alcohol or cannabis as you all mentioned doctor how do you approach it first of all we must be a good listener to them mm. to the youngsters at home and uh, even at our places we have to listen to them they have written sometimes they write the comments to me uh, at my center that uh, uh, I didn't have a listener at home that's very important and uh, if there's a listener they if they are uh, they talk to their parents they, every day they wouldn't they will, will be knowing they are aware of what uh, he is doing he or she is doing that's important and uh, when they come to our place we uh, when our place uh, we listen to them with unconditional positive regard like uh, sometimes they they feel that uh, they are inferior they are labeled not like that we listen to them and uh, we uh, 
start the treatment anyway the, to prevent that even to prevent that we have to listen to them first and uh, be with them uh, strengthen the relationships between and uh, 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 like this uh, teamwork uh, leadership uh, not without talking about uh, addiction if we do that to a teenage like uh, uh, 10 year 12 year old boy we, if we are uh, giving him the right pathway like that uh, giving the leadership and uh, the teamwork uh, uh, training uh, that will be More he wouldn't go to the that side he wouldn't uh, I'm sure he wouldn't go to addictions and uh, yeah. end up with... Uh, to get them involved in uh, other, yeah. other activities. Uh, then he will realize that it's a myth because uh, there's a myth saying that uh, I have heard that uh, that uh, when you take cannabis you can do music, you have to, to do this and that, to, to, you have to take this. That's a myth, big myth. So the, the, there are there are youngsters who are very happy doing um, nice uh, teamwork, nice musicians, uh, like uh, all that. Uh, without that, so they have to feel it. That without uh, drugs, without addictions, you can uh, be happy. You can um, you can have friends without. Uh, so uh, you have to give that. Uh, I think uh, yeah. I think that's very important. I, I, uh, that was a very important I idea that came out on the perception that people yeah. have of what uh, drugs can do. Uh, if I take that same line of thought to Dr. Lasit also, Doctor, uh, if there is anything that you could add, please uh, feel free to do so. And something I want to address is, uh, you know, there are in certain scenarios. If I take, uh, you know, if we, there are maybe uh, in average on average uh, a lot of people that have issues uh, that uh, have family problems and everything might be prone to this because there is no overarching you know figure that can support you but in other instances there it's just a sort of traditionally you know sort of like a trend kind of scenario that happens where people just randomly go and use uh, drugs or something how can we address those scenarios doctor um, like have you witnessed areas where uh, you couldn't find a clear cut reason why uh, people were addicted to drugs or people were using drugs mm -hmm. but you know just for the for the fact that it was happening around them mm -hmm. that they had just gone in for that if we if you know people that are watching if they do see scenarios like that doctor what is your advice to them you know if these kind of scenarios are happening and i want to ask the doctor uh, or, or dr anisha also about that same subject what can we give as an advice to people that mm. witness this mm. you know yeah so yeah the people who actually started without kind of anyone pushing them to do so right yes exactly. you asked yeah. right so majority of those people actually do it because they found that substance kind of relieves their one either their stress or the True. depression or the anxiety because these substances in the short term may have some beneficial effects mm. so that's the unfortunate truth True. so for example if you take alcohol it has what we call anxiolytic properties that means it reduces your anxiety so people with anxiety disorders especially things like social phobia where they feel very shy in front of others so they find that when they take a sip of alcohol they feel better they are less anxious so they kind of tend to take it and then gradually get addicted to the substance so there are another group of people who actually just experiment with drugs they kind of try to experiment and see how it what it does so these kind of people also ultimately can end up addicted because in the short term this is this is a very important thing uh, i want to stress here in the short term when you take a substance there might be some good feelings attached to it because what the drugs do is they stimulate what we call the reward system in the brain so when the reward system is stimulated you feel better you feel 
good about yourself, mm. right? And because this substance might give that feeling when you take it initially, especially the teenagers, they will say, why not? Right? So the problem is once you start taking the substance gradually increasingly in increased amounts, the receptors in the brain, what we call down regulate, that means number of receptors go down. Mm -hmm. So you need more and more substances to take the sa same effect. And at a certain stage, it will actually not make the reward system stimulated anymore. But what it does is, when the substance is not there, it gives ri rise to what we call withdrawal symptoms. That means the other receptors in the brain also get adapted and when the substance is stopped all of a sudden, the brain kind of can't handle it. Handle it. So for example, a person who is addicted to heroin, they keep taking heroin not for the rewarding effects after a certain time. They take it because they can't bear the mm -hmm. withdrawal symptoms. Mainly they have insomnia, that means sleep is lost. They have a lot of body aches and they are runny noses and so many problems. problems. So they are actually taking it because they can't bear the Pain. withdrawal symptoms. Yes. Doctor, I, I really need to get uh, more details on that. I have to interrupt you there, Doctor. We'll take a very short break and when we come back, we'll continue this discussion on what are the after effects of these drugs and how it's harming uh, an individual. You are with Gen XYZ. Stay with us. Come back to Gen X Y Z, um, doctors. I, I will uh, go back to Dr. Nisha. Uh, and uh, something I found really interesting in what you mentioned was uh, the practical involvement that um, the treatment gives in on initial stages. The listening, the getting them involved in uh, different ac activities. Now, uh, on textbook, you know, we can go and tell this to someone. But how can we really implement it, doctor? Now, even if it's the parent that is watching, if it's a, a friend or someone who is involved in this, someone who sees it, how can, uh, on a practical level, this be implemented? Can it be done at home, I think? Is it only possible uh, if they come for treatment? You know, if you can give some details there, that would be great. Yes, uh, I will tell you a story. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, Something that she came, yeah, she came to our place, uh, a pregnant lady. Uh, she wanted to give her baby to somebody else. She was very, very distressed because uh, her hus young husband, she he is uh, addicted to cannabis and he is uh, uh, suspecting her. He had uh, uh, cannabis-induced psychosis, so he was suspecting her that uh, the child's uh, father is uh, another person, and he, he said he will kill the baby like that. So uh, she didn't go to the police, but um, he was hitting her, and uh, her, uh, his father came to the. the to our place also, so he said, I can't bear this uh, g uh, anymore and I'm going to the police. So he went to the police. So uh, as he went to the police, I talked to the HQI and he uh, sent a crew to the place, their place and got the husband, got the, uh, um, not that uh, he, uh, he, they went to search the cannabis. You know? So he got the husband and he sent to me. So the, we had to do uh, several sessions and uh, psychiatric treatment also because uh, he was having uh, psychosis. He didn't have insight even that time. So because he was ba he badly wanted to do a DNA test because uh, he thinks that he had insomnia, a lot of uh, symptoms. So uh, we had to uh, refer him to the, for psychiatric treatment and counseling as well. Because uh, we had to take um, see him in uh, six, uh, five or six sessions, and uh, after that, I'm happy to say that uh, he wrote us a nice comment 
after uh, one and a half months that uh, he is now uh, he wrote like this api ginigat hadavat niwata bohum stuti like that and uh, he's uh, he he doesn't take any more the uh, cannabis now and we they are living happily like that i'm saying that because uh, uh, he regretted of uh, what he was doing and there's a cure so they have to come they have to come and uh, there is treatment available yeah treatment is available mm -hmm. and uh, at the last session he came with the baby baby was born and uh, hugging the baby he came to the clinic mm -hmm. right, so i think that's a good uh, example of how this works in the real world yeah. uh, if i if we take that uh, same line of thought to a uh, doctor we have to interrupt you also in your previous chain of thought i think uh, treatment has worked and uh, that is also something that both of you have advocated to, you know for people to come ahead uh, if we do really talk about that doctor and then really take it to this adolescent uh, aspect of everything uh, since uh, we are talking about this family unit and you know how it has influenced these people uh what are these co uh, issues that you have seen i think you are going on that line as well uh how the drug would really create a cycle within oneself where you have to keep using it what does the process out of it look like doctor you know i think uh, a, a very good scenario that dr nisha mentioned mm. a very short period of time mm. uh is it that sort of level that is required or is it longer or what are the general circumstances that you all you know get to see on a daily basis mm. uh, how do you all you know really approach these issues mm. so when we see a alcohol problem uh, did, uh, what we we see in certain levels as you mentioned so the way i mean the what i described earlier is how we see it in a biological sense how the brain kind of takes it but there are other levels of the problem mainly the individual level the family level and the society level so when we see a patient or when we see a client we see all these levels and what kind of have contributed to the behavior so when it comes to biological level one important factor is the genetic factor so actually for alcohol there is a 50% vulnerability a genetic vulner vulnerability to take substances so if the father drinks the genetic load is higher so when it comes to individual factors as i mentioned the stress stresses anxieties and all these problems they have within them and and also lack of good social skills uh, and inferiorities they perceive themselves so those are the individual kind of factors and when in the higher i mean family and society level there are so many factors we see now as you mentioned the family uh, kind of when the for a teenager when the family is distant when they they don't listen to the teenager and they only find answers to their questions from his peers mm. so then there is a huge gap between the adults the parents and the child so as as she mentioned that is where treatment as, comes as, in. as 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 treating physicians or psychiatrists it's very important to listen to them they should feel that we are kind of individuals where they can be open with kind of tell their problems because teenagers then do are it's a, it's a very difficult period of one's life because there are so much things happening around them and they are trying to work it out what's actually going on right that's mm. the, so they always want to show to the outer world that i'm okay i'm confident so don't worry about me but within themselves they are very Yeah, they, they 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 have a lot of issues. 
but so when an adult kind of is not listening and just give you instructions they they don't like they will not kind of take it i mean they'll say no i am fine with that why are you telling these things to me right but when you ready to listen to them and when you have that relationship then we, they will come out the real problems they have and it will take time mm -hmm. so instructing them is important telling them you do this and don't don't take drugs is important i'm not telling that don't tell that mm -hmm. but at the same time they should feel that your parent your family is understanding me and i prepare to understand but unfortunately this is <laughs> easier said and than done, done yeah. right so as, as as therapists and as people who are trained in this we can do that mm -hmm. but sometimes when when you go to the family level parents expect certain things from their Children. child and they say why 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 why, why, why can't you mm -hmm. like this so there are certain standards they expect so what uh, so this kind of and especially if the father is drinking right then, then if he is not a good role model it's very difficult for him to kind of true uh, uh, that is one part where that influences what the kind of uh, example that people have uh, that the youth has to follow yeah, something yeah, that you have yeah, mentioned yeah. Uh, doctor i think uh, that is a very good uh, another yeah. one point Can that uh, parents has to uh, have to trust them mm -hmm. sometimes uh, uh, sometimes they might have had uh, substance and then they want to get rid of it they want to go to the uh, the better way but uh, parents still <laughs> that uh, idea that he he wouldn't even be okay. Yeah, so right. that's so also that is also important. Yeah, because important. Now, sometimes we have to do counselling to the parents. The parents <laughs> <as well>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, there always there are a number of stakeholders involved in all of this. I think uh, that's a very uh, good you know understanding of you know what this entire issue looks like. We'll go into our last segment uh, after this break and really talk about what can be done at home, how we can move ahead, you know what are the services that are provided by these institutions and uh, all of that. A very important aspect to talk about. Let's go into our last segment here with Jane XYZ. Stay with us. Welcome back to Gen XYZ. This is our last segment. We have really covered uh, a lot of content, I would say, with pertaining to how uh, this, uh, this situation should be analyzed more or less on a uh, third person sort of perspective because uh, every stakeholder here has their own problems, has uh, a role to play, one would say. And I think both doctors really outlined that both with examples and, you know, analyzing the situation. Dr. Nisha, I want to go to you and get your final take in all of this. I'm sure there's a message that you give to almost all people that come. What is that uh, general message that is being given? And if you could give sort of like an outline of, you know, what is being done, a conclusive sort of note to all the young listeners in all of this. What is that general message you would like to give? And I'd like to take that to Dr. Lasit as well. I will just tell this, uh, don't go with the myths. There are a lot of myths with uh, substance. False news. False news. Yes false news that uh, this is good for like what I said yes, earlier yeah. that uh, good for music good for your body building like that, like that. so don't go with it because uh, it's very harmful uh, sometimes uh, you don't like to feel be, to be advised but uh, go with the facts go with the real uh, true facts that's all. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think uh, that is a pretty conclusive note to give. Basically, there are authorities that are available. Doctor, if you could, uh, how can people reach out to uh, the organization that you work for? You know, is it uh, available in a lot? Yeah, no, actually, okay, Mitru PSA, we have a helpline. Government, government means I have the phone. Uh -huh. I can give that helpline if. Uh, so there's a helpline involved. Yeah. There's a website and also, if uh, I'm not mistaken, is it? Uh, or your function under the Ministry under of the Health? Under the Ministry of Ministry of Health, I think. It's government institution. Yeah. So the. Yeah, it's a, um, and uh, I think we were discussing before the program as well 
available it's available in a lot of areas so in if we all the hospitals there are uh, so, okay. mental health units no? so yeah. they can come to the hospital uh, be brave to come to the hospital if uh, you have okay. any problems so mm. i think yeah there is a good message because uh, eventually what people want to know is where they can reach out to so don't have to have a stigma because it's a, it's another hogan no like you are going to the eye surgeon you are going to the ent surgeon like that you have to go to the that uh, relevant clinic that's all it's uh, it's also a myth stigma is a myth too <laughs> that is true <laughs> doctor if we could uh, go to dr lasit uh, the final most question <laughs> that i will have is uh, how what is the conclusive message you would like to give uh, what is the conclusive message you have given to general people that come to you you know how you have really understood this where we have really talk about the core issues and everything mm -hmm. uh, how can we proceed forward from this point what are the changes that you need to see yeah uh, so i talked about this biological individual and family levels and there is a big component in the society level as well so i'll just uh, brush on that so to uh, kind of contain the drug problems in a country in a society the most effective ways are actually making the drugs unavailable as far as possible the ways you can do is you can increase the prices you can restrict illegal methods of distributed drugs and can and also especially for the teenagers there can be a age limit ideally at least 21 years where you can legally purchase any drugs from even the legal drugs so that kind of making drugs unavailable for the teenagers would be the most effective way of kind of in a societal level how to contain drug problem and also advertising the teenagers learn these behaviors in movies they watch movies they have this uh, very kind of role models in the actors they love and then sometimes the industry uses them to kind of spread the message that this is a drinking is the norm and kind of those kind of advertising promoting uh, substances needs to be stopped and coming into the services and coming into my kind of message for the especially for the teenagers who watching this program so what i would say is not taking any substances and being able to say no to anyone who kind of invites you to take substance is kind of shows your personality it is a skill you need to develop and if you have that skill and you can say firmly no to substances whoever the person who kind of invites he will win and also if there is a problem any thing which kind of drive drive you to substances please come to us we are there to help as i said there are so many psychiatrists spread out in the country now it doesn't need to be a consultant psychiatrist there are a lot of uh, medical officers of mental health throughout the country and also counselors and also ngos so they will help mm -hmm. and they will tell you what to do and so as she said have no stigma people have problems they and <laughs> there are solutions for the problems mm -hmm. and uh come kind of reaching out for your helpers is the best you can thing you can do go forward i think that is a very important note that we can end our discussion on you know these resources are available it's a matter of now going to these resources and getting the kind of help that we need we hope to bridge those gaps and bridge those barriers in the years and uh, days to come uh, i thank both our guests dr lasito bearche and uh, dr thank uh, you then uh, yes uh, for coming and joining us uh, on uh, this program uh, dr fernando uh, i think we will we'll be able to take this uh, message forward because even yesterday there were a lot of 
discussions on how you know we should address this issue of drugs and you know save the younger communities away from all of this uh, so on on that note uh, we'll again once again like thank our guests i thank our viewers for staying with us this is another episode of gen xyz where we really wanted to tackle a issue that is prevalent within uh, the youth population of this country we'll do so uh, in the coming weeks as well thank you for joining us stay with us on adil 24 this has been gen xyz and that is it namaskar have a great day